All right, hey, Shalom, Shalom. Uh, this is the brother Atazwa. I'm here back in the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, I hope and pray that it's edifying. Uh, before I get started, of course, I want to give all praises, all glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Also, I want to say double honors to the apostles and elders uh, of Great Millstone who do rule and teach well. And peace, salutations, many blessings to the elect of Israel scattered around the four corners of the earth. All right. Um, this lesson is going to be entitled, In Times of Darkness, Our Eyes Shall Not Be Dimmed. Um, and what inspired me to do this lesson was uh, earlier today, um, I was doing a, uh, you know, my daily workout. Um, and this picture is where I go to work out. It's at a uh, national park called Stone Mountain Park. And you can actually walk up the to the top of the mountain um now it's a it's a, a very strenuous workout you know brothers are you know brothers that's familiar with this walk up trail you know what i'm talking about and if not you know you just basically you're going on the incline up up a very very steep mountain and it um you know it's it's a real strenuous workout um so as i'm you know walking up the mountain you know it's approaching uh sunset um already so i get to the top of the mountain and i uh rest a little bit you know, watch the sunset, which was a beautiful, um, you know, visual. And as the sun, you know, uh, set, I, I made my way back down the mountain so I'd be able to see, you know, my steps. Okay, so as I get uh, to the bottom of the mountain and I go to my car, I, fi I, I, I find out that I left my keys at the top. When I had sat down and, and, and uh, watched the sun, I left my keys all the way at the top. Okay, mind you, my phone was on 3%, so it was about to die. So and it was dark so mind you i had to i had to walk all the way back up the mountain and come back down but to you know to uh you know for the sake of time the point that i want to make is the the second time that i went up the mountain and came down it was already pretty much an hour after sunset and i was noticing that i was able to see without using the flashlight on my phone and i i marveled because it, it was cloudy you know, it was it was drizzling a little bit and it was uh, it, it was it was fairly dark when I began to make my second incline up the mountain. So on my way back, I was expecting it to be pitch black, but I was noticing that I had actual vision. An hour after the sunset, I could see my steps. I could see, uh, uh, you know, the puddles of water. I could see the rocks where where you see how they incline, how, how they decline. I could see where it declines. I. I had perfect vision as I was coming down the mountain and I was um, wondering if I, you know, if my vision would have been obscured a little bit due to the fact that it was an hour after the sunset. Um, so it just brought to, to, to my mind as I'm coming down the mountain, I'm praising Yahweh Bashim, I was shy. And it just brought to my memory about the times when we were in Egypt and Yahweh Shai uh, was that, uh, that pillar of fire by night, you know, to give us light in the wilderness. OK. And, um, you know, and it, it just brought that to my memory. Like, yeah, you know, the scriptures say our eyes will not be dimmed in the time of, of, of darkness. So, you know, and that's the truth. You know, as we're approaching uh, dark times. OK. Right now, you know, we're approaching dark times. You see, um, you know, all kind of different prophecies developing right now. That's, um, you know, going to bring in and usher in a time of tribulation. And uh, in those times of darkness. The Lord is going to give us vision. He's going to give us direction. He's going to give us understanding and comfort. And that that occurrence that happened to me earlier kind of reassured, you know, that in times of trouble, the Lord is going to be a light unto our feet. The word. OK, so uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump, get a couple of precepts. And it, this may be a shorter lesson because uh, this program that I'm using, uh, I, I only have 15 minutes uh, screen recording. Uh, so I'm going to try to hit the points in, uh, to the best of my ability until I'm able to get my other laptop and uh, clear up some memory on my phone to go longer. But uh, to say the least, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. This is Isaiah 32 and 2. It says, And a man shall, shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dimmed. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. But the point that I wanted to get is where it says the eyes of them that see shall not be dimmed. Uh, now, what is that talking about? That's that's talking about spiritually. OK. And what do we see? We see the prophecies. 
okay? We see the things that were written aforetime clear as day. Why? Because we have the vision according to the scriptures. Like the scriptures say in uh, Revelation 3 and 18, it says, Anoint thine eyes um, with the eye salve that thou may see. So because the Lord has opened our eyes to the reality in which we live in, okay, and we see things for what it truly is and not uh, uh, based upon a facade or based upon an illusion, when when things begin to uh, get sour out here, when things begin to take a turn for the worse, okay, the Lord is going to give us direction. The Lord is going the, the word is going to be a light in our path. And that's what I picked up, you know, as I was coming down the mountain the second time after retrieving my keys. That's what I picked up in the spirit. Because I marveled that I still was able to see, and it was one hour after sunset. And I didn't use my flashlight on my phone because, mind you, like I said, I had 3% battery. So by the time I got back to the top and came down, my phone was practically dead. So I couldn't use my flashlight to guide me. I had to, you know, basically just, you know, rough it out. But I marveled that I was able to clearly see every step of the way an hour after sunset it was it was a uh, it was 9:45 before i made it back down to the mountain okay so continuing on it says um well that's the point that i wanted to get on that salaki so, i'll read it again isaiah 32 and 3 and the eyes of them that see shall not be dimmed and the ears of them that hear shall hearken okay so the lord is going to pour that spirit upon brothers in the time of darkness in the time of trouble that's getting ready to come upon the earth, the Lord is going to give them vision, okay, direction, okay, understanding. The word of Yahweh Bashim Shah is going to be a light, all right? As a matter of fact, let's get that, Psalms 119 and 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light, un and a light unto my path, okay? So, yeah, man, you know, because we have the word of Yahweh Bashim Shah. We're able to use this to navigate through the valley of the shadow of death. We're able to utilize this word and, and, and implement this word when when things begin to get sour. OK. The word becomes a light unto our path, man. It shows us how to move, you know, in a place of darkness. And and, and, and that's also in a time of trouble. You know, this wisdom, knowledge and understanding is going to be the stability of that time, man. It's going to give us direction, man. It's going to give us comfort when we're placed in certain situations. We'll know what to do because we have the writings of the scriptures. Okay. Another scripture, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 17. Um, it says, is it not yet a very little while and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf ear hear the book, Salakia. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. You see that? And that's talking about now. OK. The Lord has has pretty much brought us into this marvelous light. And now we see things for truly for what it is. We know who the, who the, who the wicked is. We know who the righteous is. We know what the prophecies say about World War Three, about the pestilence, about the famine. Martial law, okay, race wars, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the microchip market of beast, all of these things we clearly see because, but at one point in time, we were what? We were blind. But out of that, out of that blindness, the Lord brought us into this light so that we can see out of obscurity, man. Okay. And that's something to, to, to be thankful for, man. Okay. Because that light is going to increase. Uh, as we near the time of destruction, is going to get more and more brighter, man. Okay, this is uh, Psalms 18 and 28. It says, for thou will light my candle, the Lord my power will enlighten my darkness, man. And he's done that, man. You know, Yahweh Bashima Washai has enlightened the darkness, man. We were once celebrating Christmas. We were once celebrating uh, uh, um, Halloween and, and all these other... Um, you know, false religions and things of that nature. But because we uh woke up to the truth, hey, what we don't we don't celebrate that stuff no more, man. We don't walk in those ways, man. We abstain from those ways, man. Because the Lord has enlightened our darkness, man. 
This word is a candle onto our feet and we're able to properly navigate throughout America without being uh, tripped up. And that's what I picked up today as I was coming back down the mountain. You know, that, that in the times to come, in the time of darkness and trouble, okay, the Lord is going to give us clear direction, man. He's going to give us, uh, uh, um, you know, that vision, man, to be able to maneuver and navigate in times of trouble, man. Get out of the way of trouble, man. You know, and I'm going to get this one quick precept. <clears throat> I quoted it earlier, but I want to get it. <clears throat> Yeah, Revelation 3 and 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed in the shame of thy nakedness, do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. You see that? And how are we anointing our eyes? By what? By reading. The scriptures say what? Blessed is he that readeth. You anoint yourself with oil. It's not this understanding known as the oil. This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is known as what? The oil. OK, and that gives us the 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 eye salve to be able to see the things that pertain to these times that we live in. Therefore, the word and the word is Yahweh Shai. Therefore, Yahweh Shai is that light that shine up in times of darkness as he was that that pillar of fire that shined in the wilderness for the children of Israel. At night. In the, in the time of darkness, Yahweh Shai was there to be what? To be that light. And he's going to do the same thing in these times, but it's through the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he'll be the light. And he'll guide us through implementing that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in our steps, man. So I just wanted to put that that uh, quick little video together, man, because I, I, I you know, I, 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 you know, I received something spiritual from that, man. You know, the scripture saying, um. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1 or Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1, that thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. So it's always lessons that you could pick up throughout your day to day, you know, when the spirit, that the spirit is dealing with you, that the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai is working with you. And that was just one of uh, many things. I'm pretty sure other bros have testimonies and things that they seen through the spirit. But I just wanted to share that. Lord willing, that was edifying. I'm going to close it out, giving all praises, glory and honor to Yahweh Bashim Shai. Baha Shimra Kakodash. All right. Also, double honors once again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, safety, much love to the elect of Israel, the men, women, and children. All right. Until the next lesson, I want to say, Shalom.